bless your name today. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Oh, for such a wonderful life that you've given unto us. Special life. You've given it to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, our Savior. And so we gather here today, Father, continuing in the light that which you've called us. You've saved us. You've called us. You've brought us into your family. And here we are with you now. The reality, the wonderful relationship that we have with you. And then the calling that you've placed upon us to reach out, to touch others. You have a purpose and you have a plan for us to save the world. Oh, that all men might be saved. Hallelujah. And we feel, we sense the urgency of the hour. The timing is now. And so we are gathered here with you today, Father, looking to you to encourage our hearts and to speak to us that we be stirred, dear God, from within and moving forward, the fulfillment of the calling that you've placed upon each of us yes, is imminent. And we bless you, Father, and we thank you. We just praise you and all that you do. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You can be seated if you will. Well, good morning. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God for you and, and for all that he is doing. How goes the journey? Are you winning? Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah, we we win. You know, I was uh I was looking at some things this morning and uh I was thinking as we grow and develop in the things of God, uh particularly in 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 our faith. You know, we're growing. We're supposed to be growing in faith. And so and some of us have been around a couple of days. If we be honest, we, we <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, uh, as you, you get, there is what's called Christian experience. You get, an, you get experience living with God. And, you know, and that's all, you know, the devil, is, he doesn't have a whole lot. And so, it don't, it's not long till he start repeating stuff, you know what I mean? And you can pick up on that. You know, you ever be somewhere and you say, you know, I've been here before. Well, well the devil, he doesn't have a whole lot. He, he runs out. And then he starts backtracking. He just starts reusing old stuff. Everything he has now is secondhand. And so he has nothing new. You know, the same thing, God told us that. The same thing that he is putting on one, he's telling others about it. Mm -hmm. he, he uses the same, come over to your house and bring some trash over your house, and then come over to my house and bring the same trash. <laughs> well, sometimes we have collaborated between us, and so some stuff that you've been dealing with, and I know about that, and then he bring it over to my house, I know what that is. Uh -huh. And then he's so slow, from time to time, he'll come back with the same thing that he brought before. And I said, I know better than that. I've been here before. Uh -huh. So what am I saying? I'm saying that there's experience that we get by living with God, and you learn things. And, and so because of your experience, you are better equipped to always be victorious. Yes. And so I shouldn't be getting worse. I should be getting better. Oh, yeah. Because I'm telling you, the devil is limited. He is limited on resources. He is limited on help. He's, he running, he's short of help. He don't have enough help. And I'm telling you, so, so, but, but, we, but we are, with, with God, we have unlimited resources. And God went on to tell us that we have come into an innumerable company of angels. We're not short of help. So in light of that, we should be winning all the time. And started moving forward. And I, and I was thinking there, and I was thinking how, dear God, you know, uh, you know, I've been on this, I've been on this journey a good while. And, and so, you know, I've learned some things. And so it, it really gets more exciting 
And, you know, God said in his word, he said, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. Well, when I, I'm seeing God bigger and more. I really am. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really seeing he's bigger than, he's way bigger than he used to be. And I'm seeing more of his glory because, I, you know, you, you, you should be seeing more. If you don't see no more than you were seeing 40 years ago, maybe you better check and see where you are. Because if you know if you if you're running this race a while, you're supposed to learn something. Amen. You know, it's just like a you know you ever, you ever go get a job and they ask both the guy they ask you how long you've been doing this. <laughs> it makes a difference. You know, you got a nice resume. You know what I mean? You've been you've been you've been you've been managing this stuff for 35 years. Well, they 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 want you. Why? Because you know something. You have experience in that. You should, what am I, all I'm saying is you should, by now, <laughs> you should have some Christian experience. And you shouldn't be just losing. Because if, you, if, 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 if you've been around this long and you're still losing, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You ever think about maybe you better check your sign, check your GPS? Check, check your GPS? <laughs> maybe you plugged in the wrong address. You know? <laughs> yeah. Amen. But, but these, these things are real. They're very real. Yeah, yeah. We, we, you know, we move, we're learning. We're learning, we're moving forward. And uh, we're getting we're more experience of this. And we just, it's just, you know, it's, it's a wonderful journey. But, uh, but, but we're, always, we're always reaching out to embrace and touch others and bring others in. And so uh, I want to talk about some things today. I want to talk about what are you doing with your Goliath? What are you doing with your Goliath? You got one. Now don't tell me you don't have one. If you are a believer, if you are a Christian, if you are born again, you got one. You may have a couple of them. I don't know. But I know you got one because the devil will see to it that you got, have one. There's no way in the world that he's going to just watch you get born again and just live happily ever after. He don't ever come on your house. No, you know, no, no, no. I'm, I, there's no such thing as that because I, I know, know he's coming. Because God said he's coming. That's right. And I heard God say, yea, and all that will live godly will suffer persecution. And I know he already said that. Yes. That's what he said. But he also said, out of them all, I'll deliver you. That's right. So don't be, don't be discouraged just because they say you'll suffer persecution. persecution. Yeah, they're coming. But they've got to get something for them when they come. That's right. You see. And so the question is, what are you doing with your Goliath? And we're going to talk about that. Now, when we read, we go back and read the Old Testament. We read the covenant, our old, old covenant. And we read the history of God's people on the earth. Now, that's not just there for just to have something to read. You ask your question, why did God record these events and put them, bind them, and give them to us? And we have them hundreds of years later. We still have these events that transpired in the earth you know, God's people in the earth dealing with the devil. Why, why did he leave them here for? He left them here for us so that we could. Now, now <clears throat> they, they, their victories <clears throat> can be an asset to us as we are living on the earth today. Get, get a hold of that. And so we're going to look at some of this, and then we're going we're gonna to draw some, some, some lessons out for us to learn because see the kingdom of God is supposed to be expanding we should be doing more than they did back then because we have what we know and we have what we learn from them yes. you know it's kind of like you know see I expect my children to do more than me yes. I expect them to go further than I do yes. because they have what they have learned from me and then they can pick up and go on I can teach them things that they don't have to learn on their own. Mm. I can teach it to them, and then they take, they, they, then they'll know everything that I know now, and then and they go on, and they should go further than I. Yes, sir. I, have, I, have, I have excelled further than my father. Yes. See, in, in, all, in all ways on the earth. Yes. My father left the earth in 1955. He wouldn't even know what a cell phone is. <laughs> See? Well, well, I, well, I have excelled far beyond. That's right. 
You follow what I'm saying? Well, the body of Christ, we as believers, we as children of God, should be far beyond those of the, from the days of old mm -hmm. because we have the record of their victories and Holy Spirit is living inside of us, giving us directions and guidance as we go. Amen. To whom much is given, much is required. And so we should be moving, we should be moving further and faster and doing more than those of old. But we, but we can, but we, are, but we can, but we have those lessons mm -hmm. that we learned from those from days past. And so the question is, what are you doing with your Goliath? Now I, I, I want you to, we're going to be going, we're going to go back to the uh, 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 first and second Samuel and, and look at look at the life of David. David is one of my favorite characters. I like to read about because of the victories. You know, beside that, Jesus is the son of David. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. So he learned something. David learned some things. Hallelujah. He had a relationship with God. And we have all of these psalms that he, that he penned for us, you know, his relationship with God. And so he had to contend with his Goliath. So we're going to look at how he contended with his Goliath, took him out, took his head off, and then we're going to fast forward because we still got him today. We still got our, own, we got our own Goliath, the Goliath today. So when we ask the question, what are you doing with your Goliath? We are talking to those that are called of God, those that there is a calling of God upon your life. Now, if now, so what's the call? Well, those that are born again, those that are believers, that covers you. What are, if you are a believer? Now I'm talking to you. And if you are a believer, listen to me real carefully, there is a call upon your life. Now, many times people think, well, yeah, yeah, you know, you may be called, but I'm not, I'm, that, I'm not much. No, listen, there's, God has no insignificant children. He doesn't. Every child he had is most significant. Now, if you are a believer, then you are called of God. And you are special and you have worth. Oh, that's a good one because the devil always tried to rob people of their values. He tried to rob people of their worth. He always tell them that you're nothing. In fact, that's some of, maybe some of yours, the Goliath, is the fact that you're not much. But, you, but I'm telling you, that's, not, that's a lie from hell. If you have been born again, if you have believed on the Son of God, if you are a child of God, then you have worth. And there is a purpose and a calling on your life. Know that. Let me confirm that with the word of God. 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 9 says, Who has saved us and called us. Are you saved? Yes. Amen. Who has saved us and called us with a what? Holy, Holy calling. Not according to our works, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ before time began. It's interesting how God talks to us and he just steps all over our, our way of thinking. He just walk all, he just, he act like their watches don't even exist. He, God, <laughs> and God's talking, he act like calendars don't even exist. Isn't that amazing? Well, they let you know who you, when you come to know him, you, whoa, 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 you're in high cotton now, boy. You're born again. No, you really are. And we need to understand that. Many of us, I think, we, we tell, well, you're born, yeah, I'm saved, but you don't think much of yourself. You think you're still down in that hog pen. No, 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 no. Just the very fact that you are born again elevates you to a place that your mind know absolutely nothing about. Amen. Dear God, that's mighty good. Just the fact that you are born again yes. shoot you to the top. Yes. That's, see, the word of God is what confirms this, and that's what we have. God has given us his word, and when we look at the word, you know who you are. You don't know who you are by how you feel. Amen. You don't know who you are by what somebody tells you right. or what somebody told you. Yes, you are who you are based on what God says. Oh, child of God, please get a hold of that. Please get a hold of that. That's going to do you much good. 
When you begin to see yourself, not based on what you think, not based on who put people say, but based on what God says. My, 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 that's so vitally important. That's the thing that keeps us defeated many times is because we're looking and we're looking too much. You see too much. Shut your eyes. <laughs> no, you do. You see too much. And you feel too much. Amen. How you feel? You even call, ask people every day. How you feel? What difference does it make? It makes no difference how you feel. I want to know, I want to say, I want to know what does God say? And that, when you, but you got to practice that, you got to develop in that, and you got to grow in that. Not going to just be on you all. Just, you're going you're to have to start thinking that way. I am who I am. I can do what God says I can do. I am what God says I am. You got you to think that way. Amen. We gave you some confessions a while back. You ought to, be, you ought to use them sometime. You know, you know here, I got one right here. Right? I listen. I believe the word of God and I do not doubt, you see. I believe I can have what it says I can have. I believe that, you see. I believe I can do what it says I can do. You, you follow me? See what I mean? You you gotta you gotta say that. I didn't just I didn't pretty just put them on there so you can you just throw them around and you know me use them for whatever. Read them, read them, confess them. It's for you. Because the more you say, <laughs> you know you you know the more the greater the, the voice that you believe the most, your own, Amen. your own. Right. See that's why you, just listen to what people say about themselves. That's what they believe. That's what they believe. Because your boss is the one you're going to believe you more than anybody else. That's why you got to say. Yeah, that's what God said. I will say of the Lord. He said, say that. Say, I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. You got, he's telling you to say that. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. You need to say that. Because when you hear you say it, you're going to believe it. You see, you see what I mean? These are, these, these are principles. And so you, so you have to develop your, but you got you to you say these things. You got to say, and you believe what you say. Now, now, if you're a believer, then uh, you are what God says you are. And that's what you need to be following. Oh, God, child of God, turn the news off, please. Do your, please turn it off. Now, I know you're so, well, I need to, well, keep, you keep looking at it. You just keep looking and you're going to stay defeated. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you the truth. Who has saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works. No, oh, I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Oh, I'm glad to look at that grace. My God, that justifies and qualifies everything. The grace of God qualified me. The grace, oh, the grace, the grace of God, which was given. Oh, I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. It was given to me. It's a gift from God. And a gift, all you do is say thank you. Oh, gift, you don't have to pay for it. You just say thank you, thank you. Given to us in, oh, what security, what security. Not only has he given to me, but he gave it to me in Christ. So you can't get to me. You can't get to me. Why? Because I'm in Christ. The only way you can get to me is get to Jesus. And I know you ain't going near him. See, I'm telling you, Peter, child of God, that's the way. So you got to believe that. The Bible is not just for you to just look at. It's for you to believe it. Believe what God says. It was given to me, this wonderful grace that justifies and qualifies me, given to me in Christ. You can't take it. You, can, you got to get past him. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. You got to get past Jesus to get to me. Amen. Now, why do you think it's in Christ? <laughs> Go back and start reading through Ephesians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and, see how, and, read, and, and outline, underline all them in him, in him, and whom, and in Christ. Yes. Uh, and you'll find out it's more than you want. It's, you, oh, it's a whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. In him. He's always he's talking about me. And that's my new location, my new address. In Christ. I'm in Christ. Uh, now, this is not just something for you to just kick around. It's something for you to believe. When you believe and apply the word of God to your life, it will be a reality unto you. And we're going to show you this throughout these lessons here. And it was given to us in Christ. Oh, Lord, look at that. Before time began. Take your watch off and throw it away. Remove the calendar from your desk. Don't, you don't, then no more time. I'm out of, God's not in time. 
See, that's why we always sweating and puffing. Demo, how long? Oh, when? God, what, what, what do you mean when? What's a when? No, no, it's, you got to get, you got to lose sight of time. It ain't no more time. I am in Christ. Period. And I've been in, God, this was appointed to me and designated to me before time be, before. <laughs> Look at that. Before, before time. Why did God put that there? To stir you up? Before time began. So don't come tell me about no time. You know, and that's how the devil, one of the things that the devil defeats us with is, is, your, is, your, is your watch. The devil defeats many believers with their watch. Oh, I've been believing God for such and such a time, and it didn't happen yet. See there? See? See, you need to take the watch off, y'all. Well, I've been confessing that I'm healed. I don't seem to be healed. Who told you you weren't healed? Well, I don't feel like, see, there you go. You're back with it in the flesh. You're going to have to learn these principles. You're going to have to learn these principles that when you move, when you are in Christ, you are out of the flesh. You can't be in both. You can't be in both. You can't. If you're in Christ, you got to get out you can't be in Christ and in the flesh at the same time. You can't. If you love the flesh more than through Christ, then stay in the flesh. I ain't no victory over there. I'm going to tell you that right now. Amen. Ain't nothing but gripes and complaints and, and frustrations and everything else that goes with the devil. That's why God said, you got, he said, say this. I've been crucified with Christ. Yes. It's no longer I who live. But the life that I now live, I live by faith. In, in, in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Whoa, wow, that's where I want to be. See, that's where I want to be. But my point is this, this is where the victory, this is where your victory begins. When you begin to see yourself in Christ and it's not according to your words, it just, just, just throw you away because see, if you look at, you keep looking at you, you don't never qualify. Listen to me real carefully, child of God. If you keep looking at you, you don't qualify for this, and you, and you, won't, you won't receive it because you don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't have it. Right. Now, let's go over to 1 first, to, 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 to first Samuel, and let's pick up with God because God says some things there. Here's, he says that in 1 Samuel 16, 7, he says something here that, that will confirm what he says there in, in 2 Timothy. Now, in the seventh verse of, of 1 Samuel, Samuel 16, here's what he says. He said, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance. Mm -hmm. See, don't, don't you see his getting away from that flesh? See, we always looking in the mirror and want to know how does this look? I don't care how it looks. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> no, come on, it's the truth. We are so concerned about this that you lose, you lose sight on the inside. I just do enough to the outside to keep it decent. That's all I do. That's all the thing. Just do just enough to it to keep it decent. And I'm, I'm, I'm not some other thing. Where is it going? Nowhere but down the here. Nowhere. The thing getting old anyway. <laughs> and you say, well, it's amazing how we spend so much time. How you look? How you look? Who cares? It's going nowhere. It's seen its best days. Why are you wasting time? Why are you wasting time with it? And God don't even look at it. Come on. I'm just reading the Bible to you. I know you can do whatever you want to do. But yet we're so concerned, getting mad about it. Concerned about it. And God said, I don't even see that thing. Oh no, it's the truth. I'm just reading, listen, I'm showing you who you are. And once you find out who you are, now you can operate. If you look around at the culture around us, every, all of our ills today, all of the frontline news is, de, is based and determined by how everything and how everybody looks. All 
all of the, if you forget, if you take that off the news, off the, then there's no news. It's all tied to what's, what you look like. Well, is it, what color are you? <laughs> Fighting wars over that. Yeah. You're black, you're white, what color are you? Green, red, yellow? Yeah. Who cares? Amen. God don't even see it. Amen. And we fight about it. Yeah. Marching with signs in the air. Yeah. Ought to be somewhere praying and preaching the gospel to somebody. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature. Huh. You, want the big, you want to go to the gym and fix something and God don't even see you. He don't even see it. That's a statue, you know. Oh, I want to be a, what do you call them? 36, 23, 16, whatever size. I don't know what size they are. But, but, but. And you just spend all that time and starving yourself, trying to look like a, a 36, 23, 38, whatever your size is. And God don't even, and no, and God don't even see it. God don't even see it. Ain't nobody looking at it but you. No, this, I'm just reading the Bible to you. I'm trying to bail you out. I'm trying to get you into the arena of victory. And the Christians ain't no better. The Christians are better than the rest of them. Down there sweating and starving. And then God don't even see it. Do not look at his appearance or his physical, now you can't miss that, or his physical stature because I have refused him. Say you was going there, he's looking at all of them fine boys of, of Jesse and he said, well, this is the one that God said, no, 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 no. I don't select people based on what they look like. I don't call people based on their physique. Watch this. For the Lord does not see as man sees. Now you see what we're talking about here? See, we want to know what you look like. We want to know what color you are. We want to know where you come from. We want to know all of that. That's, that's men. That's not God. That's not God. For man looks at the outward appearance for man looks at the outward, and that's exactly what, and we Christians don't know better, looks at the outward, and we want to see him. And then we'll make a judgment based on what we see. But the Lord looks at the heart. See what we're talking about here? You see, what, you, you see, you see what's got to get us established? We got to understand that, that God is not so moved by what you look like. He's not so moved by your physique. He's not so moved by what your age is. How old, how old are you? But he's, he sees the heart. He is interested in that part that has to do with him. I'm born again. I'm born. I'm a spirit being. That's what God calls my heart. I'm a spirit being. I'm a spirit being. He calls that my heart. He's not talking about the blood pump. He says, I, I'm, I'm, I'm that, 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 that when you heard the word of faith, when you heard the word of truth, and you believed, and you became a new species, that's who I'm dealing with. That one on the outside, he's here he today and gone tomorrow. He's all over the place. I don't fool with that thing. Up and down, like a basketball. I don't look at that. I look at, God looks at the heart. Yes, sir. Now, you, now you see the difference. Now you see how people are so, people's lives are so confused and frustrated and messed up based on themselves and what they see out of them. Yes, you got people that are depressed based on how they look. I see a lot of, a lot of young girls, a lot of young girls, because they don't look the way that the world say they should look, whatever that is. They're depressed. A lot of them can't even eat. You know I mean they can't keep you know, they, everything they eat? They go gagging and throwing up. Mm -hmm. What do they call that thing? Yeah. Whatever it is, it's gonna kill you. 
You, you follow what I'm saying? You see, that's, not, that's what the devil does because it's all on the outside and everything that you see here is going no further than this earth. It came from the dirt and it's going back to the dirt. It's not going anywhere. So when we understand that, I think when we understand that we'll be free to grow in God's grace and in his knowledge. Now, what are you going to do? That's your, your Goliath always attacks the outside. Mm -hmm. He's interested in the outside. He uses the outside to defeat you with. Goliath uses your outside to defeat you with. The part that God don't even pay attention. The part that don't even hear him look at. Goliath used that to defeat you with. And we are so concerned with the outside that we let that happen. We let, we let, we let the devil do that. And that's what keeps us in a tailspin all the time. That's why we always ask people, how do you feel? So what, what does that do anything? Are you, are, you, are you still there? So my question is, what are you doing with your Goliath? Now, unbelief brings fear. Now follow through with this because I'm going somewhere with this and you're going to see some things because you're going to understand how you have your, your everyday life. You're going to understand the things that you are confronted with every day because all, every one of us is going to, uh, op, going to deal with this opposition. Yeah, and all that will live godly are going to suffer persecution. Opposition, the devil is going to come against you and he's going to attack the things that, that don't really mean, that, that don't even amount to much. The devil is going to come at you, your Goliath is coming at you and he's going to attack what don't even amount to things, nothing. And we're going to be so in a tailspin. People getting mad and frustrated with one another over something in the flesh. Notice that. that that's why people are mad about it. Mad about natural stuff. They don't get mad about spiritual stuff. They're mad about natural stuff. And that's what I'm saying. So you got to understand the, 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 the value is not out here. The value is inward. God looks at the heart. And you want to make sure your heart is right. How is your heart? Well, how, you know, see, 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 we, you know what a hypocrite is? Hypocrisy is when one tries to project something that they're really not. They try to pretend to be something that they're not. That's hypocrisy. Well, God don't do hypocrisy. He don't do that. He knows the heart. See, God don't have to ask you how you feel. He knows. He don't have to ask you how you're doing. He knows. Because he goes, he looks at the heart. He looks at the heart. So, see, here's a, this is, I'm trying to show us how to be victorious. Just stop. Just, just, we just have to, you, you know, when, you, when you're all tangled up, best thing to do is just stop. Just stop, just stop. And ask you, who, who, who am I? What am I doing? What, what, what is this? What, what, what am I doing? Who am I? Where is my desire? Where is my heart? Is my heart is my heart is on the things of God. And what am I interested in? Am I interested in me, my flesh, natural stuff, or am I interested in the things of God? See, you need to evaluate yourself. Because I mean, after all, if that's what God looks at, that's the part I'm going to try to make sure is straight. I'm going to be more interested in, 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 in what's in here than I am what's out here. Because, see, we try to impress people with what's out here to, to, to fool them and make them think there's something else in here. That's the truth, you know. We, try, we fake out with what's out here to make people think the right things in here. You know, you, you show your teeth and you smile. You don't like them. But you want, to, you want to make them think you do. Because it's the proper thing to do. No, no, no God see right past that. He doesn't see that. You know. And you, you see people that will go out and you, I see people, watch this, particular couples. They'll be at each other like a chicken on a bug. And soon they see somebody else, they go. <laughs> Show the teeth. Because they want everybody else to think they're okay. This happened, this happened a lot with married people. 
They, they, they're, they're ripped at one another way worse than they'll say to a stranger. Because, the, because they say, number one, the stranger ain't going to take it. The stranger ain't going to call them what they really are. So they'll call it, they'll, they'll, they'll have, a different, have an attitude with their spouse that they won't have with a stranger. That's hypocrisy. Yeah, that's not, that's not you. Well, God don't, God don't like that, you know. No. They do, they do, they do, they do things, you know what I mean, internally that they don't, they don't want nobody else to know about it. You know, they say, you, somebody knock on the door. And then they run around moving stuff, putting stuff in the place. What you doing? This is where you live. I don't want them to think so. Run around picking up stuff and run around. Uh, that's hypocrisy. I don't want them to know that I don't wash my dishes. Now you know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. It's hypocrisy. You see what I mean? I, I, I want everybody to think I'm okay. I want everybody to keep. I think I need to keep a nice, clean house. Don't go in my bedroom. Move. Go in the house, ask for okay, you. No, you can't use the bathroom. You can't get anything. <laughs> yeah, not really. I'm, I'm, just, I'm trying to show you. But, but the, the God will develop all of this out of you. Because when you understand that God looks on the heart, it doesn't matter. What you, I am what I am. You know what I mean? God already knows. And if, and do I respect you more than God? No, God knows. Mm -hmm. So why are you trying to make people think that you are something that you're not? Mm. Hypocrisy. Mm. And it keeps you in bondage. It, you're not at liberty to grow and expand yeah. and fulfill your fullest potential and the calling that God has placed in you. Wow. Your good life, your these, this, I'm telling you, yeah. No, you got to be, see, that's why, now, prayer is the key to correcting this. Because there is a spirit of humility that comes over you and operates in you when you are before God. I mean, it's like you're so innocent and, and oh, God. And then that will go with you. Because Jesus doesn't leave you. When you come out of your prayer closet, Jesus does not come out of you. As when you are in your prayer closet, you are, you are establishing a platform for Jesus when you come out of it. Because if you leave Jesus in the prayer, in the prayer closet, well, and all you take out of there is bring out of his flesh, well, what's with that? No, I want Jesus to dwell in me. I want him to walk in me. I want him to be my God, yeah. and I'm his child. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm talking about? You see what we're talking about here? See, people, we're talking about real reality. We're not talking about just a little dab of religion with a lot of us have just been operating. We're, I'm trying to press us in to where we can be effective in doing what God's called us to do because a lot of us hang on the perimeter and don't even realize it. Pressing in to God, whereby when you come out of your prayer room, God is manifest outwardly in your life. Yes. When you come out and when you interact with people, they know there's something about you. Wow. And they like it. That's how we're supposed to be. This is the reality. Of the, this is what God is looking for. This is why he said he looks on the heart. Anybody can paint a picture. Anybody can dress up and put on a pair of pants. But I want to know what's inside of those clothes. God doesn't stop at the clothes. He looks at the inward heart. He wants to know what's inside. That's, and then you, when you understand that, then you are free to develop and grow into a position where God can freely operate. And people, this is something that, you, that grows in you. This is not something that, you just, that just happens. You develop and you grow into what I'm talking about. 
the real you, the real you, the real you. The real, you remember that was, I remember that was years ago. I don't know if any of you all remember it or not. There was a, there was a show on the TV, a, they call it To Tell the Truth, I think. And they would have two, three people up there. Uh, some of you young people may not remember that. But they would have about three, pe three or four people up there pretending to be a particular personality. Oh, yeah. and, they were in a, and the contestant would ask them questions based on the, you know, that particular personality. And, and you had to determine which one was the real one and which one were, 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 were not. And then it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a fun show. I don't know, stuff like that. They don't say, I don't know. But, it, but, but then the real person would stand up. Yes. You, you follow me? Yeah. But the other ones were fakes. How many Christians do we have? How many are faking it? You follow me? How many are just saying it just to try to make people think they are? But how many really love Jesus? How many really love Jesus? You hear what I'm saying? You see, uh, see, people, this is real, see, because, see, we cannot, see, all, this, God, this window of time that God gives us on this earth is supposed to be a time of productivity. We're supposed to be productive. Yes, sir. We're supposed to, we have a calling on our lives. <clears throat> and your calling is not to run from the devil all your life. Amen. Your calling is not to grab and complain about what the devil is doing all your life. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you, the truth of the matter is, I don't care what you are dealing with, I don't care what kind of problem you think you got, your calling, there's no recall on your calling. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, and that's the truth. And I don't know if we realize that. God's not going to look down at you and say, oh boy, oh boy, oh Ron, he's having such a hard time. I think I'm going to, bro, don't worry about preaching. Don't worry about telling about it. I know you're having, you, 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 you having such a tough time, man. I know, I know it's hard. No, no. When God saved us and yeah. called us with a holy calling, yeah. not according to our works, but according to his own purpose, he is expecting you to fulfill that purpose on this earth. Oh, yes, sir. And you, can, you can't tell God that you had a bad toe. Oh, it, it won't work. It, it won't work. I'm telling you, it won't work. It, well, I, and, I, and I have to tell you this. I know, I know that sounds mean. I know, it sound, I know that sounds wrong. But you can't tell God, well, you know, the dog died and the cat got the toothache, so I just couldn't do it. You can't do that. I be, I'm honest with you. you it won't work. G that, see, see that, that, that's the truth. God has saved you. He has called you with a holy calling. And the calling is not according to your works. It's according to his purpose that said I have a purpose for you and I'm calling you and I'm giving you eternal life I'm expecting you to fulfill the purpose whereby I'm placing in you and don't come telling me later on you can't do it because when I call you I equip you I give you my Holy Spirit to live inside of you. And the Holy Spirit I'm giving you is not for you to just spit and jerk. It's for you to work on. It's for you to do, do the business that I call you to do. No, really, it's the truth. And I think when we understand that, it will motivate us and prod us to move forward and move Goliath out of the way once and for all and get busy about God's calling. People, this, that's the truth. It ain't about just going to church. It ain't about just going to Bible class. It ain't about that. Amen. We try to help and assist and encourage you when you come here, but your calling is out there when you go out of here. Amen. The people that you interact with, the people that surround you, the people that use that, 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 that live on the people that you are supposed to be impacting. And, and I, 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 for some reason, I don't know why Christians think that, that, they are, that they are issues and their problem excuses them. I have to tell you the truth. I know I sound rough sometimes. I know that. I know that. But, I, but, but, but I, our, our issues and our problems do not excuse us. If, if that was the case, then everybody's excused. Because everybody got to deal with the same devil. Dear God. I wish I didn't have to deal with that thing. 
But I have to deal with the same thing. And I, I just love you, but I have to learn how to deal with it. Because God will show you how to, he'll show you how to deal with it. Is you put him under your feet. Right. You got to do it. You cast him out. Right. Don't sit up there and grab him and talk about him, talk about what he's doing to you. Yes, sir. Can you, anybody ever watch boxing? Oh, yeah. I don't recommend You don't have to watch it. <laughs> but can you imagine the guy standing up there complaining about how they got punching him? God, take half your head off. You said we talk about complaining about it. He hit me in the jaw. He going to hit you again. Said, soon as you stand still longer. <laughs> no, come on. Really, but, 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 but it's amazing when Goliath jump up in our faces, we think complaining about him is going to make him go away. He's not going away. In fact, he's going to double up on you because he see, I'm getting your attention, boy. You understand, you understand how, you understand this? See, much, our, our victory is really in our calling. That's right. Amen. Oh, yeah. Our victory is in our calling. Mm-hmm. See? And we, we're going we're gonna to have to, you know, that, that, that's where your victory is. The fulfillment of your calling, the purpose whereby God has placed you here is being fulfilled. That's why God, the first thing he does, God, did, you, did you ever notice God doesn't send people out to do the work without saving them? He first, that's what he says in the scripture. He said, I have fought for, who has what? Saved us. That's right away. Okay, wow. That's, God did that the way. He saved me. Then he what? Called me. His approval on me. And it's not just a regular old everyday calling. It's a holy calling, and it's not based on my abilities. Oh, I'm so glad about that. It's not based on my ability, but it's according to his own purpose. And so if God has a purpose for me, and then he called me, then don't you know he's going to equip me to do what he called me to do? And all I have to do is just agree with him. I agree with him and say, yes, Lord, I, I, I'm, you know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to go. Now, let's take a look at the opposition. The first demon that pops up is the spirit of fear. It's the first one, the first one that pops up in reference to the calling that's on your life. Unbelief, unbelief brings fear unbelief when you don't take God at his word. It brings on fear. Now look at the 23rd verse here. Look at the 23rd verse here of this of the 17th chapter. Then as he, this is, this is David, then as he talked with them, David, David, David's father had sent him out to take his brother some, some goodies and take, you know, go and visit his brother, see how they were doing. And so he came over to see him. Then when he had talked with them, there was a champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath. There he is, by name, coming out from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same word. And David heard him. Now, David knows God. He know God. He has had an experience. He has been called, just like you've been called. And he knows God, and his confidence is in God. His confidence is in nothing else. The first one and the first thing that you should learn when you are called is that you are called not according to you, but according to God's purpose and his plan, and your operation is by his power and his word. Uh-huh. If ever you think that you are something, see, listen, listen to me very carefully, and God said this, ain't no flesh going to glory in God's presence. You're not, you're not going to wrap back and beat on your chest and say, ah, look at what I did. Forget that. That's not going to happen. David understands that. He understands that the calling of God is upon his life, and he understands that it is God that's going to get it done. And David heard that Goliath. Now, that Goliath, his, 
he is a mess. He, 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 he is a mess. I mean, that big old basketball head guy, he's standing there. I mean, he's, he's a mess. I mean, and everybody running from him. I mean, this guy's, he's fearsome. If you're looking on the outside, he's fearsome. But guess who don't pay outside no attention? And so God don't pay outside no attention, so I don't either. People do not impress me with their looks and how much they, what they got. I, I don't, I'm not impressed with them. Amen. I'll sit with some of the best of them. I don't pay no attention. Amen. I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed with you. In other words, with nobody. I'm not impressed with your person. I'm not. Number one, it doesn't even do the person any good. I'm not, you, 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 but, but, you know, and we, we, we are, you know, and I'm not talking about offering, you know, honor to whom honor is due. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about just generally just impressed with people just because, wow, look at him. Look at what he has. I don't really care. Amen. Amen. See? And so you get like this when there's a calling on your life, when there's a God calling. And I don't care how big this nine foot tall giant with all of this arm and stuff, did not impress David. It did not impress him. And he heard him. And David responds. And he said, all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. When they saw him, all in Israel saw him and what happened? They forgot all about God. They forgot all about the Red Sea. They forgot all about the river. They forgot everything. Yeah. They forgot that. Isn't that amazing? Mm. They forgot all of their origins. They forgot everything that God ever did for them. This is the same children of Israel. And God went and then broke Pharaohs down and took them and brought them out from down there. There wasn't a hungry one among them. 600,000 men, not counting the women and children, was a feeble one among them. He forgot all about that. Oh. Got to the Red Sea, God built an instant pathway across the sea. Dear God, yeah. how do you do that? He cut a fairway yeah. right through the sea, and they marched out of there, and then Pharaoh took up behind them, and then he closed the way fairway up, and it drowned them. Wow. Forgot all about that. And the Bible said they were dreadfully afraid. When I look at us today, don't you, there's nothing you see new. When I look at the church today, and the devil go, boo! And we forget all about, we ever spoke in tongues. We forget all about everything that God ever did. You forgot all about when God healed you. Yes, you got all, forgot all about when God delivered you out of such and such a situation. Forgot all about it and took off yeah. and headed for the hole. Yes, sir. There it is right there. Yeah. You're, not the, you're not the first one did it. That's right. A year or so ago, the devil said, boo! And the Christian took off. Didn't even lock the church when they left. <laughs> Ain't been back since. God have mercy on us. Forgot all about that they were a new creature in Christ. They forgot all about when Goliath showed up. Dear God, the Bible said it, they were dreadfully afraid. You know what? That's petrified. I never seen so many petrified Christians. I never seen so many. And I, did, I say, dear God, Lord, help us. As if though Jesus doesn't even exist. They acted like God had not done one thing for them when they saw that giant, that bubblehead giant, hollering out there across them. That means for 40 days, they were ah, running and hiding. Yes. Hmm. Running and hiding. Oh, yes. Running and hiding. Now, faith is another thing. When, when Goliath show up, see, faith, there is a boldness in faith. 
I think it's the 26th verse, that same text. You, you, can, you can read, read, read this whole 16th and 17th chapter. I love, you, you will enjoy reading that. Look at the 26th verse. Then David spoke to the men who stood by saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? He called it a reproach. Watch this, watch this. Now listen, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine who should defy the armies of the living God? He, he doesn't call them just men. He, this is, we are God's people. Who are you to tell me and run me in a hole? Who are you to tell me I can't come and worship God in the church that God designed for him in worship? Who are you to tell me that? Amen. No, that's your, that's your, that's your present day Goliath. It's the same thing. Same, same thing. Same. Who are you to tell me that? Mm. Ah! But Goliath is real. Mm. Yeah. But, 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 Pastor, this is real. This is real. This is, uh, yeah, Goliath was real too. Yeah. Y'all know what size he was. Don't, don't you see? Don't you see? It's the same thing. Mm. It's the same thing. Yes, it is. And yet we justify our fears and frustrations. Mm. Mm. Do, do you think Goliath, Goliath is never going to turn to a lion? Lamb. He's never going to turn to a lamb. You got to make him a lamb. Yes, you got to kill him. No, do, do you th listen, listen, listen to me real carefully. When you give in to the devil one time, you're going to have to give in to him again. That's right. That's right. Don't forget that. This ain't over. This ain't over. Did you ever notice, did you ever notice how the devil has, is, is, is working overtime with this mess that he got going on? Uh -huh. remember, he, remember he said, Boo! And then it went on out and it almost kind of fizzled out. And then the devil said, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm work this out some more. He said, boo the second time. Ah! Scared the tar out of him. It's the same Goliath. It's the same Goliath. And now, his, now, his, now, his, now I'm going to frustrate him. Watch this. They, they produced, they call it, they, they developed a serum, right? And said, okay, get your shots and you're all right. Then when he got the shot, the devil said, nah, I'm going to frustrate that. Don't get no shot. Don't get no shot. The shot will kill you. Goliath will kill you, and the shot's going to kill you. And then it's, then, it's, then it's petrified. Then he said, the devil said, nah, I'm going to mess him up again. He said, then he said, well, I'm going to make you take the shot. Ah, you ain't going to make me take no shot. I've never seen so much frustration as I see right now. I'm, and, the, and the poor Christians is so pitiful and it's going along and I'm like, dear God, Lord, have mercy on you. And you should have spit on the thing to begin with. Yeah. 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 I'm like, God, God, help us. We seem as though we have, and we're just trying to, we call it, we always, we got to have some wisdom and all of this foolishness. You know, how are you going to, even, look at how you, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? It's producing frustrations and divisions everywhere. Families divided, churches divided, splits. Everything is happening. Division. That is from hell itself. And much of the church think it's something legitimate and is trying to go along with everything and, and now they don't know what to do. Now they don't know what to do because half the world is going this way, half the world is going this way, and then all, all the rest of them just enjoying the fun, enjoying the frustration. And then, then there's those that are, that are profiting by the frustrations. That's right. Wow. That's right. I said, you, I said, and I'm like, dear God, if you just got saved two weeks ago, you can see through this. But the poor Christian, the poor Christian, they are dreadfully fearful. It's the same, it's the identical same thing. It's the identically the same thing. And I'm like, what have we learned? You can go back and look, because everything we're dealing with has already been already. Right. The devil has no new strategies. 
Do you see what he is doing to Israel here? And, and, and over the years, over the years, the devil just kept on, just kept on. Yes, and sometimes God would say, what's wrong with you? Mm. Uh, when, God was, when God was dealing with him, when God told him to go, take, to go into the promised land, and God was talking to Moses, he said, Mama, what's wrong with him? Oh, we can't go because all of them guys look like giants. <laughs> God said, all them signs, he told, told Moses, go back and read the Lord in Numbers. God said, all of these signs that I perform are before them. How do they carry on like that? God said, I'm going to kill them. He did. He said, I'm going to kill them. He did. I mean, I, I, can, I mean, come on. He said, I'm going to kill them. And Moses, Moses interceded. Go back over there and read it. You, you've read it. He said, I'm going to kill them. What, what do you think he's saying about the church? What do you think Jesus is saying about his church in the earth today? What do you think he's saying about his church? Is they acting? The church is acting just like Jesus never went to Calvary. Now, can you can you imagine? That's, I'm telling you, a great deal of the church is acting as if though Jesus never went to Calvary, been manipulated and controlled by Goliath. And you know it's shameful. It's shameful. It's shameful. It's shameful. It's shameful. I refuse. I refuse. They get upset with you too. They're getting mad at you. Now listen to this. Now Elon, look at the 28th verse. Now Eliam, this is oldest, old, David's oldest brother. His oldest brother heard when he spoke to the men. Eliab, Eliab's anger was aroused against David. David come talking faith, and his brother got mad at him. Oh, watch it! Oh, oh, don't worry about it! Don't worry about it! Don't worry about it! They got mad! They got mad at you! They got mad at me! Because if I don't go along with the foolish, I don't. I don't go along with the foolish. I don't go along with it. What? What are you mad? They mad? Upset me? Get upset with me? I don't care. Well, that's not the first time they got mad at God. Well, God, remember what God told Moses? He said, Moses, don't worry, but they're not mad at you. It's me. It's me. It's me. They got, he got mad. Look at, look at that. And Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke, he took to the men of it. His anger was aroused against David and said, why did you come down here? And for whom did you left those few sheep in the, in the wilderness? I know your pride, the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. David said, what have I done now? <laughs> nothing. He had done nothing. He just mad. He is mad because he is standing up for God. Yeah. He is standing in faith. And the word they're going to get mad at you Amen. when you stand in faith. Right. David said, what have I done? Is there not a cause? Now watch this. He turned from him to, uh, to another one, to, to uh, uh, toward another, and said the same things. And these people answered as the first one did. They, 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 see, see, when, see, when unbelief will come at you, they, 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 they create other unbelief. I, I know people right now, I know people that, 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 do, that, that have done this. You know, they, 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 unbelief rise up, and then they affect other people, and they mess them up as well. Oh, yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, listen, I, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I, don't, I, don't, I just keep loving everybody. I just love them all. That's going, that's going to mind my business. Do what God sent me to do. But I'm not putting up with devil's foolishness. And I'm not giving in. Because God, God, God always got somebody that will stand up. One kid stood up. All, all I'm running from that big old bubble head and running up in the cave. And getting mad at him when he stand up to him. Same thing. It's the, it's the identical same thing. Same. They get mad at me. They get mad at you. Yeah. You see, and they'll, they'll get upset, and, you know, when you don't go along with their foolishness. But my dear friend, this is, this is, I'm telling you something. This is our generation. And what you do is going to determine your outcome. 
See, see the first, see the first, see Jesus told us, and, and this is where this is where many of much of the church has failed. They, they missed the first word. The church has missed its first work. Remember what Jesus spoke to the church did in, 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 in Revelation? He said, you left your first love. Well, we have left the first work. What did Jesus, if anybody come out to him, what was he first to do? Nice. We didn't do it. We didn't do it. We came, but we didn't deny ourselves. We came, and now, now we're scared. We're scared we're going to die. <laughs> well, I tell you right now, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. Sooner or later, you're going away from here. You can buck and holler and run and hide all you want. I'm telling you, you're going out, you're going out of here. And, but I, I really wouldn't compromise the calling that's on my life just to keep from dying. I, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Listen, I tell people all the time, but they don't have people get, they get really nervous when I talk, talk like this. I tell people, you know, I was military trained. I really was actually military trained. I did, I did a lot of service in the military. And I was military trained. Every soldier does not walk back home. Right. Some are carried back. Right. But he finds that, but you, 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 when you, when you enlist, you know that. Oh, yeah. Jesus taught the church the same way. In fact, they got it from the church. Jesus said, when a man come after him, the first thing he do is deny himself. When you join the United States Army, you first thing you do is deny yourself. By contract. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you desert in combat, they can shoot you. <laughs> the enemy don't have to kill you. They'll kill you. The enemy don't have to kill you. They'll kill you. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's not, you, you, you're on the contract. Yeah. I will not flee in the middle of war. I'll not turn coward. Jesus established that standard for the church. The first step of the church is to deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. And you scared of dying? Are you, are you, are you mad? What, 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 what do you got? Do you, do you see what we're talking about here? Say, I know this is radical. I know it's radical. I know people don't care for it. But I'm not going to just preach to you and let you go home and sit down and watch the TV Amen. and be comfortable. No. 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 No, this is, this is war. It's radical. You may or may not walk back home. So, Amen. and come on. After what Jesus has promised you, yeah. don't you believe it? Uh-huh, yeah. See? See what, see what the problem is? No, I don't believe it. They'd rather stay here than go be with Jesus. Anytime you get to a point, in a point when, you, when this world is more appealing to you mm -hmm. than being with Jesus, you got a problem. And the devil has fuel for you. Right. Your Goliath, just, his head just got bigger. <laughs> because the world itself that you are living in, as, as messy as it is, is more appealing to you than what Jesus has for you. Wow. You know you got a problem. You see, do you see what the, do you see what the church is saying? I'm, and I'm have to be I'm being straight with you. I'm I'm not I'm not preaching any watered down religion religion anymore. I'm not I'm not going to do that because I have to answer to Jesus. And I'm going to tell people the truth. If you can't handle the truth, you just have to do whatever you got to do. But people, this is this is real. I mean, I tell you what, go home and go read go read the eleventh chapter of Hebrews. Just go read it. Who, who do you think that is? That's the church. Read the perspective of the last part of the 11th chapter of Hebrews. Those, those, are your, those are your sisters that's running and hiding in caves. Those are your sisters and brothers that's being sewn in two, in pieces. Those are your sisters and brothers. So, oh, they, okay, oh, they're going to they put up with all this, but I don't have to put up with nothing. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No, come on. No, no, no. <laughs> you, see what I'm, you see what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I, I want you to leave here shaking. I really do. I don't want you to leave here just saying, oh, oh, oh another wonderful Bible class. 
Bless you, God. Bless you. We got to bless me, God. Bless me, bless me, bless me. Bless me, bless me. No, come on, people. People, we're at war. The devil hate you. And he's going to do everything he can to make you compromise your calling. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. I will not compromise my calling. Amen. Whatever it takes. Jesus stood his ground to the end. He did not compromise. The Father sent him here to die. Oh, yeah. And he never drew back. Never. In fact, if you, if you really examine his trial, they almost let him go. Mm -hmm. If you really look at that trial really closely, Pilate said, I'm not killing him. I'm not going to do it. He, he almost had to provoke them yeah. Yeah. To, kill, to take his life sure because it had to be. Yeah. Do, do you see what we're talking about? You, but you see, here's the thing. People, listen. This few minutes we spend on this earth is nothing. Yes, it's nothing in compared to what God has for you. He said, your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men the things that God has designed for those that love him. Prepare for those that love him. Do you understand what we're talking about? So don't, don't, don't let this messed up system here that you're in here for just a few days mess you up and get you lose, cause you to lose sight on what God has for you. Jesus said, I go away to prepare a place for you. Oh, yeah. And if I go, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there are you. Jesus wants me to be with him. Yeah. So in order to be with him, I got to be like him. Yes. So I got to preach like him. Oh, yes, I got to talk like him. I got to live like him. Oh. Amen. You understand what we're talking about, people? This, this is real. Don't, don't, don't let this word, don't let this thing attract. That's what the devil did, for, did to Jesus when he came up out of the water. He tried to attract him with this world. And the devil is trying to do the same thing. Your Goliath is trying to attract you, attract your attention with the world and say, look at what I have for you. Hang with me. <clears throat> you take it. You understand what we're talking about, people? This is where we are. So I'm just telling you, don't compromise. Don't back off. Don't back off. If they're getting mad, well, just let them get mad. It's your mad. But I'm going to tell the truth, and I'm going to read this Bible to you. Jesus said, be not afraid. I'm with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You don't have to be afraid of nothing. But God has a calling on your life. You hear me good. God has a purpose for you. Get before God and tell God, I want to do what you called me to do. Yes, Lord. Whatever it takes, I'm willing to do it. Go ahead, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yeah. Father, we bless you today. And we honor you. Oh, God, I thank you for this hour. This is our time, Father. This is our time to shine to let our light shine before men, that they'll see our good works and glorify you which art in heaven. <clears throat> you have a purpose for us, Father. You've called us, you've yeah. saved us, and you've sent us forth. And we go forth in the name of Jesus to fulfill our purpose and our calling. Yeah. And no Goliath is going to stop us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Go for it. Go for it.